briefly offer reflections on chapter 3 of quotations from Mao Zedong, uh, Socialism and Communism. Um, so I will proceed with this. Um, just a couple of thoughts that stood out, although the whole thing is quite uh, important and not inglorious, you could say. Um, I, this is very important. Mao's statement about um, objective law. Uh, this this be this next statement being objective law, independent of uh, the will of human beings, um, that socialist the social system will eventually replace the capital system. He states this as, uh, as an outright objective law, um, independent of human will. I would think though that maybe there's some kind of over will, if you will, like a will of the species, the will of the masses, um, fundamentally more powerful, more just ma just massively more great than the will of the um, tiny capitalist class, uh, overclass. Um, another ex very important point Mao makes in this uh, chapter is for um, the proletariat, the peasants, the common people, the masses, most people, not to hide their political views, um, especially communists, I think he's referring to, um, and socialists. Um, I think he's, of course, urging people to um, cultivate a political view that is beneficial to themselves and, and the persons who are like them, um, the common people, the masses. Um, which is maybe more difficult today in the West and in the United States as um, our minds have been poisoned for so long by um, very effective mass media deployment, though um, with people, selective uh, internet viewers are able to, uh, users are able to um, view material which is conducive to empowerment to the masses and an individual self. Um, I want to also uh, sort of include uh, not to maintain a person your political views out of fear, fear of reprisal, fear of torture, whatever the media instills um, and reality, uh, political reality instills in you um, not to carry, not to maintain your political views based on fear. Uh, but rather maintain political views out of understanding um, what is right and to um, uh, out of the will to do what is right. Other than this, uh, uh, another thought was today we, that we only have a democracy of international finance. Um, we don't really have a democracy of the people. It doesn't represent the people, it re represents international capital and international finance, their interests, the interests of the uh, overclass, does not... The democracy we experience here in the United States is not a democracy of the people, where people are thinking for themselves, thinking for their own kind, setting up their own systems that are benefit of going to be of the most benefit to the most people. Um, all so-called democracy in this country is run through a filter of, um, which includes massively a bias towards the bottom line and keep maintaining profits for multinational corporations, um, keeping the politicians, um, which you know is all about keeping uh, the. Um, <coughs> I don't want to speak here. Uh, go outside the bounds of what I w was trying to say. Um, just the corruption of the. Um, current political democratic system in which, um, you know, major corporations just buy politicians and bribery and legal bribery, the lobby, lobby, lobby thing. I'm just going to do this the whole time. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, there was something else. Uh, if we ever do have true democracy, a representative of the people, um, Mao and I sort of urge that we will have effective socialist reform and revolution. This is coming out of his statements about how there's a it's a the, the so-called revolution is um, a dual sort of a dyadic revolution with first a democratic revolution coming and then a from stemming from that a uh, socialist revolution. Of course, um, 
I wanted to sort of urge that we need, we still need a democratic revolution uh, in the United States because what we have today is not democratic. Um, another point was that socialism will expand. Uh, oh, so a socialist revolution in the United States will expand our industrial and agricultural production, just as Ma was saying uh, was a, applicable to China back in the 40s or 50s or whenever that quote was taken. Um, the United States desperately needs industrial and agricultural production development. I mean, we are degenerating. We are sort of in a in a, in a period of we didn't we didn't uh, grow up and out of um, our industrial and agricultural production, but um, our industry or like this post-industrial phase has just been a degeneration of our talent, I, you would say. I mean, it's not as though our talent has really gone anywhere um, in this sort of post-industrial world. It's just languishing, as far as I can tell. Uh, another uh, point that Mao makes, um, which I'm sort of translating a little into contemporary situations here in the United States, the current poor class will be the dominant class from which political leadership will be utilized. Uh, it's the it's the poor working class, it's the mass, it's the class of the masses that is going to be um, wi from within from within which we're going to find leadership um, and talent. Uh, talent will rise from within this uh, class to fill all the positions which we need talent in. The masses are full of talent. There are there is a limitless pool of talent uh, among the poor and working classes, um, but we they are. Um, constrained by their economic um, and financial sort of um, reality, which is destitution. Um, once we free them from the massive limitations of the the bounds that international finance has on them, um, we're going to uh, witness a renaissance in. Uh, human affairs in the United States and the rest of the, w the West and the rest of the world um, that is still uh, languishing under the tyranny of international capital. Uh, another very interesting point Mao makes is the perfection of the phenomenon of poverty and this blankness uh, that individuals who comprise the masses uh, experience as uh, come in, in association with their poverty. Um, this is perfect. Mao claims this is perfect because it is poverty that gives rise to the desire for change, which is what we need as revolutionaries to spur the revolution. Uh, and, and the blankness, um, Mao sort of indicates the blank sheet of paper um, may be painted with the most beautiful of paintings. So he's just saying that the masses who have been exploited and abused and left to have nothing of themselves um, are in a perfect posi position to become uh, filled with wondrous and interesting features of human existence, which will be made available to them after the revolution. Uh, another very important point Mao makes is uh, the necessity of social revolution prior to ending the, st uh, the prior to ridding the world and the country of state power. Um, I think this is a very important concept in communist and socialist theory, Marxist theory, that um, we need to strengthen the state and perfect the state, or approach perfection with the state, or try to perfect the state before we release the state. If we went to statelessness, statelessness now, it would be a, um, a disaster. So, uh, And the final point was... Um, that the enemy, the current uh, capitalist upper class, will not be allowed to participate in politics. Very important. The people will be encouraged, and not just encouraged, but it will be there. We will need the people to fulfill um, political uh, activity functions. I mean, this is going to be the primary role of the working class is to provide, um, to fill political needs and political tasks within the, uh, within the nation and the government. Thanks for listening, and uh, I hope to continue uh, tomorrow. Good day.